again, I had <laughs> incredibly good luck because um, unfortunately Lisa couldn't be with us today. Lisa Donovan, that is. And therefore, I get to host this episode where we have the amazing Grammy-nominated, platinum-selling artist Lisa Loeb on our show today. Hi. So Hi. excited Hi. to have you. The baby's excited too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, as you were talking, there's like an arm or a leg, like. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like don't forget about me. Mention me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are awesome. you are I can't believe this is amazing. I, it's you look really so crazy. great. It's I like know. you're the cutest pregnant woman. Thank you. Well the baby's at that size where you know the movie Alien where it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like it sound like if the pod were to open, like that's what it would sound like if the baby came out like a pod breaking open. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, it's a child in there, yes. And do you know the gender? Do I do, you? but I'm not gonna say Oh okay. Wow, we can all yes. get secret. excited. I do. It's a secret. <laughs> I know, I found out right away. The first time, I, I have a little girl who's two and four months, and with her we were going to wait, and we were waiting and waiting, and trying to think of names, and then we realized it was way too much homework to think of <laughs> boys and girls' names, so we decided to find out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so we were surprised when we found out, but with this baby we found out right away. That's okay. So, yeah. Less homework. That's awesome. Less homework. Yeah. 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 I always found with names that I could think of more boy names when I was having my little girl oh. and more girl names when I was pregnant with my little boy. Yeah. <laughs> and then also, everybody wants to know what the name is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you, but, oh, there he goes again. But then you read, uh, you're not really supposed to say because then people get that look in their eye like, oh. Yeah. yeah. I knew somebody oh, like, no. oh, the girl in my class who had that name, she was a terrible person. <laughs> You know? I named my little boy Gage, and everyone that I told was like, I knew a little boy named Gage, and he was so naughty. Oh. And I was like, oh, oh no. no. <laughs> That's so I did it anyways. Yeah, and then the joke names. Yeah. We had a really good joke name that was Bert and Ernie. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Like Bert and Ernie. Ernie. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so cute. So cute. <laughs> so funny. But it's it, it, Burton. Yeah. I, I know a Burton who's a great like hairstylist, but he's like really stylish. And yeah. That didn't seem right for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your child might be like, Mom, Burton, Ernie, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> or they might be like, awesome. <laughs> oh, is, it, is it Jason Lee? His kid is, his name is Pilot Inspector. Mm. Oh, yeah. Really? Somebody yeah. has a kid named Pilot Inspector for sure. That's amazing. Wow. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. Lisa is um, so busy doing so many amazing things, and I would love to hear you talk a little bit about your books and your music for children. Yes, I have a book. Here's the book. Oh, oh I love it. Let's, I can't read your let's, yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's hand it to you. It's like my daughter does that. She's like, eh. I'm like, it's right there. It's <laughs> really she just drops her binky. That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Struck. Called Lisa Loeb, Silly Sing Alongs. So um, the Disappointing Pancake and other zany songs. And it has a CD, see this little star that's shiny? Mm -hmm. It's a little Thank star, you. it's oh the CD gosh. that's inside of it. Oh so awesome. it's an illustrated book that um, was inspired by my second, I have two kids records, one called Catch the Moon that I made with a friend of mine named Elizabeth Mitchell, who is my college roommate. And she makes a lot of kids music. Right now she's with the Smithsonian Institute um, record label and makes a lot of very folky, real sounding, people singing and playing music. And that's what my first kids record was like. It was a little bit more lullabies. Mm -hmm. Then the second kids record I made was called Camp Lisa, which was inspired by my summer camp days, which was like a huge deal for me. I went to summer camp. Did you guys go to summer camp? Yeah, at all? I did. Yes. Oh, girls so much fun. It was like a church thingy, but it was only like a week long. Oh, well. But were you singing, standing on benches mm -hmm. and things Yeah, like right. Yeah. <laughs> so you cry. I love you, girls. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, you're my it's best so friend. so true. I'll never see you again. <laughs> so anyway, my summer camp experience was like that too. And it was it was just like a regular camp, not uh, an art camp or anything, but we did a lot of singing. And uh, I think it was where I learned how to play guitar. Um, but anyway, it was a big deal for me. So my friends Michelle Lewis and Dan Petty and I made a record called Camp Lisa. And that inspired this book, which has some of those sing-along songs. Some songs you might know, like, found a peanut, found a peanut. I don't know if you know that song. Mm -hmm. It's a very long song about the journey of a peanut. <laughs> um, but then it also has songs, original songs, like The Disappointing Pancake, which is about a very disappointing pancake. Um, <laughs> Why is it so uh, disappointing? Well, if you listen to the song, oh. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> right. um, No, but in the song, he, he's, uh, the pancake, we, we, we really wanted to write a song like um, Spaghetti the on top. What is the song called? Oh, spaghetti. Spaghetti um, on top of spaghetti. Yes, no. It's my brain on top of spaghetti. That's All it. covered with cheese. Exactly. You know what I love? Spaghetti. It's a 
about a meatball, you know, I think songs about inanimate objects, especially <laughs> food objects, right. are very Can't exciting. I knew that. So we did a, a journey of the pancake. Um, and anyway, the, the pancake ends up being less disappointing than you'd expect. Oh. Just like you and me. <laughs> anyway, that's the, what the song is. And it's, it's a collection of songs and a few activities and a few recipes. And it's kind of something that's like very interactive, but in an old school, you know, sit down and read a book kind of way oh. that you guys know, like... With your kids, it's really fun to sit and just read and look at the pictures. Oh, yeah. And then you can also mm. listen to the CD, too. Fun. So that's this book. That's, cute. that's fantastic. I and love that. I, what I love most is that I listened to you so much. <laughs> all, like, all your albums. Mm. And then um, that you have something that I can give to my kids, too. That's exciting. Oh, thank you. You know, I, I listened to so much kids' music when I was little. Mm -hmm. Like, um, when I was young, there was a record called Free to Be You and Me. It was oh, really popular. Mm -hmm. And also one called Really Rosie that Carol King, who is like a real singer-songwriter, mm -hmm. she made this record with Maurice Sendak's um, books. Mm -hmm. And it was real musicians, real recording, real production. When you listened to it, you thought you were really cool because it sounded like a grown-up record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make records like that where you have real musicians and mm -hmm. people playing real music instead of some of the toy music that you yeah, hear a lot. Yeah. So anyway, that was the inspiration for that. And you're touring right now, you're touring right now. <laughs> I'm touring for grown-ups mainly. Oh. Like, I'm going away to play in Northern California, my last mm -hmm. trip oh my before I had the baby um, on the airplane. Not on the airplane. <laughs> my last trip. <laughs> bad grammar. Bad <laughs> word order. I'm going, this is the last trip on the airplane, comma, before I have the baby Got in it. June. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm playing grown-up shows, and I also do, um, I do kids shows too as well. Um, and I also do, like, I'm doing a book signing uh, in Northern California where I'll meet kids. I don't think I'm going to play at that one, but mm. yeah. That's Lots awesome. of grown-up things and kid things. How did you begin with the kids' kids' music and kids' books? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it was funny. I was making a lot of grown-up records, and along the way, um, Barnes & Noble actually wanted me to make a record for them. Huh. But they wanted me to try something different than I ha that I hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I was so inspired when I was a kid and, and growing up by these kids' records, before I even had kids, before I was even close to having kids, um, I just was really inspired to do something like that. Also, I think making kids' music is a totally different... Um, well, in some ways, it's just like making grown-up music. You're making real music with real lyrics. But in other ways, I, again, from what you've probably heard, you can be a lot more silly or imaginative. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, it was also a really good... Um, way to collaborate. I love collaborating with other writers and sometimes when you collaborate with other writers you end up writing stories and things that are a little bit less abstract so that was a good thing for me because sometimes when I'm writing grown-up music it can be more poetic. And, mm -hmm. But for kids you want to do something that's imaginative, that can spark their imagination but that also tells a clear story that they can kind of follow. Yeah. So it was it was fun to have that challenge. So I made my first kids book Catch the Moon mm -hmm. which was actually it was a little board book and a record but it's in the CD section at Barnes and Noble. Oh, cool. oh, like if you go awesome. to the um, the book section, they'll say we don't we don't know what that is, <laughs> even though it's a book. Um, but what if you go to the CD section, they'll know. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, I, there's so many other things I want to ask you about, and one of them is this foundation, Camp Lisa. Oh yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I started the Camp Lisa Foundation when I made the Camp Lisa record. We were making the record, and I, and living in Los Angeles or just being in entertainment in general and TV and music. My friends and I were thinking, oh, we should make a TV show about camp and mm -hmm. we can show kids what summer camp is like mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they can watch it kind of like when I watched Sesame Street, they had these cool documentary style mm -hmm. shorts about frying fish by an ocean or, you know, cooking fish mm -hmm. on an open fire or, mm -hmm. you know, what it's really like to live in certain neighborhoods or, or do different activities. And I thought, oh, we should show kids that. And then I thought, we should just send kids to camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't need to like watch it on television. We should just send kids to camp. So we found a great organization called Scope that's mm. based on the East Coast. And they um, are already connected with a lot of great summer camps that have that are very safe camps, that have great counselors, that are geared towards helping kids um, who normally wouldn't have the opportunity to right. go to, to camp. Mm -hmm. And um, and not only are they interested in, in the kids at camp, but they're also interested in their education when they're not at camp, mm -hmm. making sure they finish school. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we wanted to, I wanted to send kids to these camps through Scope. Um, one day maybe I'll have my own camp, but uh -huh. in the meantime, it's great to have places that I trust to Does help send mean? kids through the sales of their record. And we will put links below to information about this foundation so you can be part of this um, amazing way to give back to kids. So how do you do it all? How do I 
to this? It's a great question. Yeah, and it's actually it. a question that has been asked by our viewers, which is, can you guys talk about how you get motivated and get your work done while also staying happy? I struggle with getting my work done and balancing everything in my life. How do you guys do it all? This is, I mean, Lisa seems to be right? the yeah. hardest working First of all, woman. you don't do it all. Mm. Right. right. Even if you think you can, you don't. You just don't. And, and that's really hard. Like, I, I can barely, I can't stand leaving dirty dishes in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the mm -hmm. sink. But you have to do that. You know, you have yeah. to not do it all. Right. You have to let your hair go one more day without washing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You have to prioritize, first of all. And also, I think, you know, the basis for being able to do a lot of different things is really getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. And I think that parents need to prioritize that. Um, I know sometimes when kids are having trouble sleeping through the night or somebody's sick or this mm -hmm. or that, they're definitely exceptions. But even with that, like I think if, if a child is really having a lot of trouble sleeping, you might have to reach out and get some help mm -hmm. so that you can sleep. I know for some people also they have trouble napping or they don't, you know, it, in my life as a musician, I've experienced situations. It was funny when I first, when I had my, my daughter, and I was feeding her, you know, the every two hours mm -hmm. through the night. It was like being a, a musician. Like, you have to wake up at 6 with and put on makeup and be camera ready and, like, go to a TV show. And then you can take a little nap. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be up again because you have to do something else and mm -hmm. look totally awake and seem <laughs> totally dressed and awake. And then yeah. maybe you can take a nap. And then, <laughs> but it went on and on. And there's a sound check for a concert. Then there's this late night concert. Then there's, mm -hmm. you know, you're up till 2 in the morning. But then you have to be up at 5 or 4 for getting your hair blown out or something. Yeah. So it's just like a crazy thing. But if, you know, I think, again, if there's any way somebody can get help, I know it can be costly, but any way to get help so you can get your sleep, whether it's cumulative through the day, you know, some people say you can't accumulate sleep, but I, I think you can. Um, or just get it at night and be responsible and really just be disciplined. Because you know when your child is going to wake up, yeah. usually, right? Do you remember when um, our kids were all mm. newborn, they said... You should sleep when they sleep during the day. Right, right. And I was like, no, I finally have like an hour to do my dishes, dishes and, and, yeah. eat right. and like take a shower. <laughs> yeah, and it, but even that, like, right, your your things become less things. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just have to realize mm -hmm. you have less things that you're gonna do. But also, I think for me with a young child, it actually helped me because I, I have a tendency to procrastinate too, <laughs> um, especially when <laughs> tasks are too big. Uh, uh, there's so many of them. But <laughs> with a young child. Their schedule, because they're so scheduled based on feeding and napping and this and that, those little, um, at least with one child, you have four. So <laughs> it's probably very staggered. But you know, like those little, sometimes 20 minutes, you can get more done in 20 minutes than you can in three hours, mm -hmm. weirdly. But also just prioritizing yeah, and not yeah. doing everything. That's so, yeah. And getting help. Yeah, collaborating. I'm lucky I have a team of people that I work with who try to help remind me that certain things need to get done. Or and also I stand up for myself. It's really important to say I'm a human. I can't do yeah, it. I can't do it. I can't go out. You know, like I feel so terrible. I, my husband's like the main priority, and my my daughter, and then my career's like few past that. You know, just being able to say, oh, let's you know, can you let's go see Foo Fighters? Like, yeah, I want to go see the Foo Fighters. What time do they start? They're gonna start at nine. I'm like. I can't go because I yeah. have to be like yeah. brushing my teeth at 9.30, so, <laughs> so I'm like, work. I really want to go. I'm like, can you call them? Can we go to their sound check instead at like 5? Um, but you know, you, yeah. sometimes you have to say no, which is a bummer. That's good. Yeah. Discipline. Yeah. I think it's hard as a woman to say, like, to mentally be like, well, I just didn't wash the dishes. You know, you lay in bed and you oh, think of like worst. everything you didn't do, but mm -hmm. like the no guilt. Don't have guilt. Mm -hmm. Go to sleep. Tomorrow's a new day. Yeah, and it's prioritizing. It's I mean, because all of you guys, I mean, how do you balance sleep? And, yeah, what do you, guys you know, do? because I think of each of you, I mean, Lisa may be exceptionally, um, you know, <laughs> many, many, many activities going on, but I think of each of you as, some, as a woman that balances pr projects that they care about, professional projects, and also a family. Yeah, how do you do it? Especially with more than one kid, too, I want to know. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking earlier, it's easier, actually, to have more than one kid because they kind of entertain each other, so Ooh. you can let them play, mm -hmm. right. and they're having the best time. They don't need Especially you when, right there. Like, but we get our kids all together, yeah. there's seven of them, and it's everyone's like, we just oh, think that it's a madhouse, but they all just have little friends, and they just go, it's loud, but we're just like, like last <laughs> night we had a family barbecue, and there were seven kids just like running everywhere, but we're just sitting oh on the couch being like, oh. Yeah. Relaxing. So yeah. 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 And with one kid, you feel, it, you know, I just, I have that thing where I'm still the, like, the hovering mom. I try not yeah. to be because I know I'm not supposed to be, but still, and, and my daughter hovers with me too. Like, if I'm on the computer, she wants to come over and see <laughs> yeah. what I'm doing, and she wants to do it, and, and I've tried the, like, 
having the fake keyboard that doesn't do anything. <laughs> just, she knows that's not the real one. <laughs> or the fake watch cell a video, phones. Or like split the screen. And like, I'm checking email over here and she's watching a video over here. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> but, but still, like, I think maybe having more than one is a... Maybe it is a different it, yeah, thing. I don't it really know. is. I remember not believing people when they would tell me that. But that it's easier when you have more than one, it really is easier. I mean, okay, there's honesty. something too, though. There's got to be something that you are being modest about in terms of how you set goals or how you motivate. Because even without having a child or a baby on the way, right. you're an exceptionally productive person. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think it can be really hard for a lot of us to practice the kind of discipline that it must take e to even keep your husband and child as priority and then to accomplish right. things you want to get for others. Just goals and priorities. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. I, I'm, I do make a lot of lists also, and mm -hmm. I, I divide my life up into categories. You know, there's, like, my house, and there's my music and my projects I want mm. to do and my inventions that are not done yet. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> different things. And then also, um, you know, it's important as a working mom to, to look at it and say, well, what am I actually making money on mm, right like, right, right. it's actually giving back to me and do i enjoy that and making yeah. that a priority right um, <laughs> and then there's also other things that you need to do for yourself and it's always but it's always constantly changing a lot of mm -hmm. review you mm -hmm. know like sometimes i realize i'm not having enough fun mm -hmm. right and i need to make that more of a priority mm -hmm. like self-evaluating yourself all the time yeah it's like where am i at am i spending too much time on this and not enough time on this yeah you know, just mm -hmm. every day doing that. And again, just being able to say no <laughs> when yes. you have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. I don't know why, as women, we just feel like we can do everything. It's like, yes, because I will we can. do that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, you because you are really yeah. smart <laughs> and <laughs> incredibly and, capable. But people, do things, people do things that are that seem smart at the time, but they aren't. Like, mm -hmm. like oh, well, I have more things to do, so I'm going to sleep a little bit less. Mm, but right. that actually makes it harder to do the things that you are doing. Or... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it happens sometimes with food where you start eating food that doesn't actually nourish you, that makes you feel worse because it's quicker, mm -hmm. but it's actually not quicker than making healthy oh, food. Right. It's you know? <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's, I think that just that constant prioritizing and sometimes just saying no, like what's the easier thing to do? Mm -hmm. What can I do? Mm -hmm. I think it's good to take it day by day and realize like what you have on like your work week. Our schedule is always changing, and every two weeks I have to fly on weekends to take my little boy, and then I'm home and I don't have him for two oh. weeks. So it's adjusting to being like a single Carly and then a full time mom Carly. And I think that I've learned to like to feel balanced and happiness is like you concentrate on the day or the week itself. I'm like, okay, I have Cooper this week. What day is my working? What do I need to get done for those days? What days do I have time to like do laundry and clean? Oh, yeah. And then when do I have the me time? And that's when Cooper goes home. So I think it's just finding a balance and yeah. list. I'm like a big lister, like I have to wash the underwear today. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna wash themselves, like I've gotta do that today. You know, it's just like making lists. And right. What's most important, like waxing the car? Probably not the most important. <laughs> actually have a question that I would like to ask. I'm sorry viewers, this is my question. <laughs> um, I, having a, I'm about to have a second child, I, it, and those of you who've had second children. Like, uh, oh, I'm not pregnant. Oh, no, what? <laughs> I <laughs> want to do a joke on somebody at some point. But I would be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, do you think, what, what do you, how are you talking to your first child about the second one coming, and what do you think about, I mean, how, you know, how is that going to work? Do you the worry transition. about it, the transition from being you're my entire universe to you're, mm -hmm. you're going to share my universe? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, wor I'm not worried, worried's the wrong word, whoa, the baby just moved when I said that. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm interested <laughs> to see how it, how it works out because, and I, you know, it's so cliched, I guess I hear a lot of moms say, you know, you think you can't love more than what, you know, you have your first child and you let, it comes out in a Texas accent because I'm from Dallas. <laughs> so I was like, I think you can't love your, you know, your second child as much as you love your first. And then you, you find out your love is like, you know. Never just, ending. It, yeah, exactly. Your love is never ending. Like, it's so nice. It's better it than is, a Texas accent. It's weird. It's like, you know, sometimes I like one of my cats better than my other cat. And so I am, I am worried. No, not worried. Sorry. I'm just, I'm interested to see how it's going to, to play out, you know, I don't know. I we did tell our daughter about having a second having a second child. We waited a long time um, just to make sure the pregnancy was on track and everything was mm -hmm. going well. Also, I had heard from some other moms that sometimes kids don't aren't aware of you know time. So if you tell them we're going to have a baby mm -hmm. and then it's like six months later, that's too confusing. Yeah. So we waited. I'm surprised she never asked about my belly because she's very verbal, but mm -hmm. she didn't ask anything. But we, we got a little book um, 
by Joanna. I forgot what her name is. It's it's a, a big sister book, mm -hmm. and we wrapped it up and we said, Aww. "Oh, here's your present." She loves presents. She loves books, and we opened it up and and. I think it was more moving for my husband and I than it was for her. We were mm -hmm. tearing. <laughs> but she was just like, we're like, here's a book for you, and, and you're going to be a big sister, and we have a baby. We said, we have a baby in the belly, in mommy's mm -hmm. belly. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't get more technical than that. <laughs> but we said, we have a ba baby in the belly, and, and you're going to be a big sister. You know, it was more mm -hmm. about she's going to be a big sister. Yeah. And then we, we try to point out wherever we can, like, oh, she's a big sister. That's her little sister. Or that's, Aww. you know, that's her little brother. She knows some sisters and brothers. Yeah. So we try to point it out. And uh, so far, she, she talks about it. She, every once in a while, she says, I have a baby in my belly. Oh. Like, no, you have lots of meatballs in your belly. <laughs> but, um, but she... I, I don't know if she gets it. She pretends to feed her baby, and she likes to read the mm -hmm. books about being a big sister. But how does it actually work? Like when the, the I mean, once she asked me to take the baby out, but she wasn't saying it in that mean way, right? like, yeah, take yeah, the yeah. baby out. She, and sometimes she pretends she'll go over and she'll take the baby. She'll be like, here's oh. the baby. Oh. So you're supposed to kiss the baby or something. But I don't yeah. know. How, how does that work so with the two kids? Um, it can be difficult, I think. Um, I know, like with my brother and sister, with my oldest brother, he used to bite my sister's toes because he was <laughs> jealous. He would just bite her toes when she was a baby. I'm like, that's <laughs> awful. So, so I was scared of the same thing happening. Yeah. But I think if you just involve them in the whole process, mm -hmm. like you are doing, I think it's perfect what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. And they start to feel like, oh, this is my role. And there will be times where they feel like, I need attention because you, right. you do. Babies take so much time and attention. But if you just make sure that you're relaxed and calm and when things, you know, like if you're stressed out and be like, oh, don't touch the baby, don't touch the baby all the time, then then they right. get, they feel like, oh. But if you can, you know, kind of bring them in on the process, let them hold the baby like they're not going to die, I promise. Right. And <laughs> let them kind of be involved with the process, yeah. mm -hmm. then they'll feel more I'm more comfortable. Part of it. I guess. Like exploring yeah, your role as a brother or sister. Right. <coughs> so I, mean, I, re like. I really tried to get my little girl involved too, and know that it, that my the little baby boy was coming and all of that, and I was so worried she wouldn't like him. So I made sure, like, we love the baby. He's your little brother. Right. And then when I brought him home, she didn't. She was mad at me Aww. because I was really close to my little girl. It sounds like yeah. just like you. She was involved with me. I took her everywhere. We did everything together, and then all of a sudden, I was giving my attention to my baby. So yeah. that's advice that I would give is to maybe be prepared for that, for her right. to feel different with mm -hmm. you. Right. I mean, she doesn't, it sounds like she, you, I, I don't take my daughter up to errands, although I took her to the gas station once and now she's just like, oh, do you need gas? <laughs> she's like, I'm, like, the gas station. I'm like, okay. One night sure. we went to the gas station. She's like, do you need gas? <laughs> Usually when Nanny's taking care of her if I'm doing something like errand-ish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes we go to the drugstore, but it's like a whole production and we stay there for <laughs> hours and look at everything. Right, right. Pull everything off the shelf. It's so much fun. It's an adventure. Uh -huh. But um, but yeah, I, I, I guess I'll tell her that. I was saying, I read somewhere, I don't know if it was on a response to a blog that I did or a story, but that, that the mother, you know, took the older child or the, somebody took the older child to the store to buy a gift. That's they took this little boy to mm -hmm. buy a gift. And yeah. They bought a, a doll for the new baby sister that was coming. And so the, oh. the little boy was all excited about the toy, that she, the, the doll, so that when the little he picked it baby out. came home, because mm -hmm. he picked it out and he gave it to the baby. When Cute. the baby came home, it made me cry. Oh, so so funny. Your brother My that? brother did that, but he also did it where the baby was giving a gift to the oh, oldest one too. Oh, maybe that's what happened too. Oh, oh, baby so it was like, both oh, ways. We did that with my little girl, and she still talks about that. Yeah. Remember when you had Gage and you were in the hospital, and you gave me that little pony? <laughs> oh. I was like, yeah. So, so, you, so the, you each give gifts. Oh, it's that's a good idea. idea. Yeah. Kids love idea. gifts. That's a good Something way to win them all. Right. Yeah, it's a gift. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Something else I wanted to talk about because this happened with my little girl. I didn't talk to her about nursing because she wouldn't latch uh, on. And so I was like, I don't want to confuse her. She's so young. So I didn't tell her. Yeah. And I got home from the hospital and I was a little flustered because it's like, oh, we're finally home and this is crazy. And I was nursing him. And I was sitting on my bed and I just did it and not even thinking about it. And Braylee was like, what in the <laughs> heck are you doing? I was like, you huge pervert. <laughs> This is why science fiction movies are made. Because <laughs> you grow a child in your belly. Like, I mean, babies are beautiful, but they're this alien being growing in your belly that, like, you made, but they're not you. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're their own people, and they come out. Uh, mm -hmm. 
which is its own special experience. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then you're feeding them and it's so like natural and we're not used to like natural stuff. Like yeah. right. in our lives, we don't, you know, we go get our hair done and we right. we're not used to real things like that, mm-hmm. like feeding the baby. So I, I'm freaked out by it too. I remember <laughs> seeing friends feeding their baby and, you know, parents are walking in and I'm like, your boobs are showing. Like, oh. <laughs> you know, it's just like, seeing you. but when you're doing it, you just do it all the time. So yeah. you get very much like, meh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was going to say, I remember crazy. Cooper, like he walked down and saw you and he like came back up to me and goes, mom, do you know what Cola is doing? <laughs> <laughs> baby Rothard is sucking on <laughs> like it's really normal. We were laying in bed last night. It's so funny you brought this up. And Cooper said, "Mom, are you gonna have a baby?" And I was like, "I know I haven't been to the gym, okay?" <laughs> he's like, "You should have a baby girl. I want a baby sister." Aww. I'm like, "You do you want to be a big brother?" And he's like, "Well, what do big brothers have to do? Do they make breakfast?" I'm like, "You have to change That's the poopy so diaper." Yeah. I don't want you to have a baby girl anymore. Like, <laughs> but you're gonna say, "Well, how much do they make?" <laughs> I think the funniest part is when the older kids. I see you like taking care of the younger child, and they're like, "Did you used to do that to me?" Yeah, like, oh. like, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you were this That's disgusting. As well. <laughs> That's, That's a vomit. big part of those books too, though. They, there's a lot of talk about like, and we have pictures of you when you were a baby, and <laughs> mommy and daddy think you're very special. And I'm like, "Are we going over the top?" I mean, but we do think she's very special. Right. And we do have tons of pictures of her when she's a baby. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes she looks at herself and she's like, "That's a lot. That's a baby. He's." eating ice cream. I'm like, he is you and you're a girl. <laughs> and you, that's you. Like, like yeah, what? Putting it all together. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll see. I know that's very mysterious. Mm-hmm. The whole feeding and we know definitely about diaper changing and she right. feeds her baby but she feeds her baby a bottle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> bottle. Can you imagine <laughs> your little girl just I pretend do. playing with she the baby? Like they do that. <laughs> they do. That's what I heard they do that. I and it's, oh. it's hard to make them understand, well, you did that, but, but you shouldn't do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, it's, it might seem I think weird. it's fine. It's fine, right? It's, it's fine. all natural. She's like, it's like, what feeding the baby. Yeah, yeah. She's Stop learning at me. That's no. what I do. <laughs> you guys, I can't believe this, but it is time. Again. I know. I'm sad Amazing. for this one to oh, end. No. This has been so, 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 so much fun. Um, <laughs> That was a lot of so's, but that's how I do. <laughs> um, it's been amazing. And we're going to put, like I said, links down to... Camp Lisa, how to get these amazing books. We're going to give this book away in the giveaway, this Facebook giveaway, and as well as... Colette, do you want to talk about this giveaway? I don't know everything about it, but hey, I would (laughs) use it. (laughs) Oh, my God. So cute. I'm so excited about that. And... An music, iTunes gift card. An iTunes gift card. And music. all music. of these lovely mamas are going to give us their favorite music so that um, you can use this iTunes card to purchase the songs that they like to listen to when they're working out. If you so choose. And so <laughs> you get music for yourself and music for your little ones Aww. for this week's giveaway. But you have to go to our Facebook page and find us there. And then definitely look below because the one thing we didn't have time to talk about, many one of the many things we didn't have time to talk about, <laughs> is Lisa's eyewear line, these amazing glasses that she's sporting, part of her eyewear line. So the link for that will be there below as well. So follow us, like us, leave your comments below, like us. (laughs) Thank you guys. Thank you, Lisa.